Welcome back to the channel for what might be the final video of an actual upgrade in the Squire Bullet Telecaster upgrade series. If you've been following along, then you will know that I've upgraded the bridge pickup to a DiMarzio Chopper T, the neck pickup to a Fender Shawbucker 1, added a Perloid pick guard, a Dillon Tone wiring with 500k pots, a roasted maple Fender neck, with Graftech string tree and Fender vintage style tuners. I think the only things that are still stock to the guitar are the bridge plate, the saddles, and the neck plate. So, one of those things is going to go, and that will be the saddles, as I'm getting ready to add these Graftech string saver saddles. Many, many years ago, literally about 20 years ago, I added graphite Graftech saddles to my black Telecaster, my favorite guitar from over the years, and loved them. It absolutely increased the volume, the resonance, and the sustain of that guitar. Unplugged, it was a world of difference. So those were entirely made out of uh, a solid piece of black graphite material. I don't know if it's 100% graphite. Today, and you can tell some of them are flipped over. Uh, these are chrome with a little black insert where the string actually goes over. So it will keep more of a stock look, which you know, isn't good or bad. It just is what it is. And uh, I'm eager to see what that does for this guitar. So... Uh, after I do this, this guitar will be done because the only things left stock would be the body and the bridge plate. And this is a somewhat unique size and shape bridge plate. If you saw one of the earlier videos and there's really no reason to change, it's perfectly fine. It holds everything together. So, uh, let's get to work, get some sound samples before and after and get these added, which is a very easy process. Okay, let's take a look at them side by side. The stock saddle is on the left. The upgrade Graftech string saver saddle is on the right. You can see the uh, chrome plating on the stock saddle. Uh, this feels much lighter in the hand than the Graftech upgrade. You can see there where the uh, string makes contact uh just a nicer you can just this is one of those situations you can just tell by touching the two of them if you didn't know anything about guitar parts which one was nicer i also wanted to say that the graftech comes with two sets of intonation screws here a longer and a shorter the shorter ones came in the package installed but I'm going with the longer ones because that matches what is stock. And I believe that that is to adjust for this being a top loader instead of a string through. Uh, so that will make the ultimate length of the string from where it connects to the body to where it connects to the headstock similar to if it was a string through. Not identical, but similar. So I'm going to get these Graftech string savers on and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, the Graftech string saver saddles are installed. It was a very easy process. Uh, still working on fine tuning the intonation, but so far so good. I'll read you a little bit about it from the uh, manufacturer's literature here, now that we have them on. String savers are engineered with PTFE, the slipperiest substance on earth. The jokes write themselves. Uh, reducing string friction at the saddles and virtually eliminating string breakage. As a string vibrates against the saddle, metal grips too firmly, bending the string until it breaks. String saver saddles ease the grip, microscopically spreading the stress over a greater area, allowing the strings to glide back into place. Permanently lubricated throughout, you can play aggressively, use the tremolo, which of course does not apply here, and do massive string bends with confidence. String saver saddles are designed to transfer the right frequencies more efficiently, resulting in balanced tone with sizzling highs, full mids, and big open lows. 
So let's take a look here at what the manufacturer claims. And I will say having uh, an old set of these on my black Telecaster, that for the most part, that is true. So now let's hear how these sound acoustically. Then we'll get to some electric samples. And we will start with the stock saddles, then compare them with these. We won't be doing a blind test today. Just straight back and forth so you'll know what you're hearing. Now we will do the acoustic test. This is an SM57. I am pointing it at the 21st fret, trying to mic this like it was an acoustic guitar. These are the stock saddles. I have my Ariel Belvedere guitar pick. And I will play some uh, big open chords. And then later, once I've switched them out, I'll try to duplicate this setup as consistently as possible. Do the same with the upgrade saddles and see if we can tell a difference acoustically. So I'm doing the best I can to keep this consistent. Doing a little bit of lead for fun, so let's see how it sounds with the new saddles. Okay, we have the upgrade saddles on, trying to mimic this as closely as possible. Boss Katana, Queen Chow, all EQs on five, starting with the neck pickup. Middle position, stop first. <laughs> Stock first.
Now going to the crunch channel of the katana. All EQ is still on five, starting with the stock saddles, neck pickup. Stock saddles first. Stock saddles first. And we'll do just one sound on the lead channel of the katana, all EQ still on five, middle position. <laughs> After playing the guitar and listening back to the sound samples, I think you can tell a difference uh, with the Graftech string saver saddles compared to the stock saddles. I think that these have a little more high end bite and especially on the low strings, a little more twang, which uh, I enjoy because no matter what kind of uh, saddles you have, if you have these six saddles as opposed to the traditional uh, three barrel brass or steel saddles, you do lose a little bit of the telly twang and bite. Uh, you arguably get a slightly more modern sounding guitar. And again, these are all subtle differences, but uh, I like that these uh, Graftech saddles give you a little bit of that back, since this is obviously more a hot rod telly than a traditional telly. Uh, I'm very pleased with them. Uh, they were, I think, $75 from Sweetwater. Which again, you ask yourself whether or not it's worth it. That is expensive for saddles, but I think the ones I put on my black Telecaster were $50 like 20 or 21 years ago. So that's not that much of an increase over time. And in my experience with those saddles, uh, the claims about reducing string breakage are true. I can, I mean, I'm sure I probably have at some point, but I almost never remember in the last 20 years breaking strings on that guitar. So if these follow suit, uh, I'll definitely be uh, pleased. Because again, those were, and I'm not sure that it was the same material 100%. This might be an upgrade. But those were entirely made out of the material and didn't just have these inserts. Uh, and I did hear a bigger difference back then when I changed from the stock saddles. Because the stock saddles on that guitar, 
I will break out the Tory Caster, which is a 1995 Telecaster. The black Telecaster is a 93. Try to get a little bit closer. You see, it has the six barrel saddles. Uh, that's what the black Telecaster originally had. And the Graftec saddles uh, made a huge difference over those in terms of volume, uh, mid range, uh, and resonance, I can say. But uh, for this guitar, again, I think these are definitely an upgrade. You heard the uh, sound samples. You can read uh, Graftex claims about the reduces in, reductions in string breakage in my own personal experience with the other ones. But uh, I do think it was worth it. And also, this is in part uh, an effort to absolutely maximize this guitar. Because I'm actually getting a little bit nostalgic as I say this. It's finished. I might uh, work on filing the nut a little bit more. It's made some improvements and might tweak the intonation and the action a little bit. But in terms of parts, this guitar is finished. As I'm recording, this is early July. I think it was either late December or very early January that I got this uh, guitar on a stupid deal of the day from Musician's Friend. So over the last six months, it has gone through a lot of changes and I've really enjoyed going on this journey. And I have really enjoyed uh, seeing it grow and transform over time. Uh, my friend Sherry encouraged me to get this right after Christmas, even though I definitely I didn't need any more Telecasters uh, because it was reduced from, I'll have to look back at the numbers, uh, $200, I think 130 And it's, you know, they say Lake Placid Blue. It's a little bit darker than real Lake Placid Blue. Uh, knowing that I would have it to want to modify because I just enjoy modifying these guitars and trying out different things. And uh, I mean, this one's been heavily modified, but it is finished. But this will not be the final video. I will release in the near future a final video in this series going over all the changes, going over the cost, roughly the time that went into it, and comparing it to maybe some... Uh, much more expensive than a Squire Bullet Telecaster stock options uh, you can get out there, though there's nothing exactly like this. And uh, breaking out maybe one or two of my uh, what came stock higher end tellies, uh, see how it compares because it's still, like for example, I don't have the math in front of me at the moment. I have to sit down and do that for the next video. It's still a, not nearly as much as an American original Telecaster would cost. And it's... Uh, or what now would be the American Vintage, which is to replace the American Original. Uh, but it's much more customized. If you're looking for a mo more modern guitar, this is about as modern as it gets with a dual rail humbucker and a full-sized humbucker, six saddles, uh, 500K pots. It uh, really is a fantastic guitar. I really liked it. It was worth every bit of the $130 or $200 full price it would have been in its stock form, but it's definitely a much better guitar now. And uh, again, you get attached to them. This is not one that I could ever imagine uh, parting with unless it was some extreme circumstance. That said too, and I'll cover this in the next video, you also don't get very much for parts casters on the secondary market. Just look at reverb listings at uh, guys that put together guitars that if you totaled up the parts, they might have Fralin pickups, and Phil McKnight's talked about this too. Uh, Warmoth body and neck, uh, locking tuners, all these high-end parts that might total like $2,500, they get like $800 for it. So if you're doing this, it's because you enjoy modifying them and or you have something specific in mind. But we'll get into that more in the next video. As for this one, very pleased with the uh, upgrade of the String Saver Graptech saddles. It's the easy, it was the first upgrade of any significance I did myself to my black Telecaster 20, 21 years ago. It's very easy to do. You don't, it says on the package, take it to a tech. Unless you are just totally uncomfortable working on a guitar, do not take it to a tech. Save the money in my opinion. It just, Tightening screws, basically. But, uh, again, very pleased with how it turned out. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Please like and subscribe. And until next time.
keep on rocking.